In this video, I'm going to show you how to leverage array formulas in Excel. We'll look at some specific use cases and examples on how you can leverage array functions and array formulas to optimize your model files. Now let's open Excel and dive straight in. Now let's look at some practical examples. First thing that we can do is we can use an array formula to calculate, for example, all these multiplications. So instead of typing different formulas like this, multiplied by this, and then copying it down, what we can do is we can just say this and grab the whole column here, multiply it by those here, and it would just give us the result for each uh, of those rows. And you see how this is slightly highlighted. There's a tiny border around it. And when you're on any of those cells, you see this grayed out formula. So this shows you that this is part of a spill. So essentially we're writing formula here and it spills over this entire range. This means that if we type something here, for example, we're gonna get the spill error. And as soon as I remove it, everything uh, works just fine. At the bottom here, we can sum those above or we can use the sum formula with an array in it. But we can say sum and then grab those prices and multiply them by the car sold. And this is gonna give us the sum of all those products. We can do one dimension or two dimension array. So for example, one dimension can be adding an ID here. So here we can use the sequence function and we can either tell it how many rows we want or we can go with count A. So cells that are not empty, select this whole thing and get a sequence with numbers going after each other. The sequence function takes a few other uh, parameters. So we can also add columns. For example, here we want one column. We can pick where we start. So for example, we can start by 1000 and we can give the step at which it increases. So we can say, let's increase at the step of 10. And now we're gonna start 1000, 1010, 20, 30, and so on and so forth. We can also do two dimensional arrays and we do that with the uh, second parameter here, the columns. So for example, we can say three rows, four columns, and it's gonna generate a sequence, but spread it over four columns and three rows. Something else that we can do is, uh, we can use the name manager here to redefine different uh, variables. So for example, I can have quarter one, and I can have this be equal to curly bracket, January, February, then March and quotation marks. And then I'm closing the curly bracket, hit OK. And now here in quarter one, I can just say this equals quarter one, enter, and it's going to spill to the side and it's going to give me the months in quarter one. We can also use array formulas to populate, let's say, the months in the year. So here we'll say we want to format it as text and we'll be formatting the date. And this date will have the year from today. Then the month will be a sequence. This sequence will have one row, 12 columns, and this will be our month. And then the day for this date will be one. And after this uh, date function here, we'll have the format for the text function. And we're gonna pass it three lowercase m's, which is uh, the month name. And now this will spill over and fill all the months in the year. We can also use uh, array formulas to generate random data for different scenarios where we need some random values. So for example, here we can say we want a sequence of 10 rows in three columns, and we'll start uh, from round between, I'm gonna say 1000 to 5000, and my step will be again round between 1000 and 5000, 
and I'm gonna divide this entire thing over a hundred. So I'll get two digits after the decimal point. I'm gonna hit okay. And this will give me a list of uh, random data. Here we have a rate of 10% and then we have a time value for money multiplier. So this is how uh, we discount uh, future cash flows essentially. And uh, instead of calculating those as separate uh, functions, we can use an array formula to calculate those in a single go. So here we can have a sequence of five rows, one column, starting at one with a step of zero. We want this to be one going all the way and we'll multiply that by one plus our rate. And this will be to the power of sequence five. So five rows essentially, one, two, three, four, five. Enter and you see that we get the exact same uh, time value of money multipliers. We can also use different other functions, for example, the transpose function, which allows us to grab an entire array. It's enter and it's gonna tr transpose it. And here to the side, you see that we have the character, so the length of the car name. We can do the same with uh, an array formula. So len and then grab all those and to we'll get the length for each bar name down here. Then as a total, we can do the same thing. Sum, length and grab all those again. And you see we get the same result and we can also use other various functions like for example, average, len, and grab all those again. And this would give us a slightly different result because we have the zero here. If we remove it, it's the same result. We can also use it to, for example, get a specific uh, number of uh, like smallest volumes or largest volumes. So for example, here, if you wanna list the first three smallest volumes, so those should be one, one, and three. We can use an array formula and it's gonna look something like this small here instead of uh, like selecting everything here we can just say b13 hash which will expand the selection and we can then say that we want sequence three so the first three smallest and we'll get one one three we can also use it in different situations where we need some error handling. So for example, here we want to sum those, but you see that we have two errors. If we just use sum, this won't work. But what we can do instead is do sum, then if is error, we'll see if uh, the value is an error, select all those. And if it's an error, we want nothing, otherwise we want those here. Close that and you see that we get 872.36. And we can also do things like count the errors. So if we're trying to identify if there are errors, we can have a counter here. We can say sum if is error. those so if it's an error one otherwise zero and this would give the count of the errors here we can do what we did in the first example multiply those two arrays and also calculate their sum by using sum and inside multiplying the two arrays essentially eliminating the sum product uh, function and here we can also do some uh, conditional summing, essentially. Let's say we want to see the sum of revenue from cars that they're selling about 400,000. So we can say sum if our condition will be this revenue is above this number here. If that's the case, we want this revenue. Otherwise, we want zero. 
and this will give us the sum of sales above 400,000. Those are a few examples of how you can leverage array formulas to calculate things faster, speed up some of your work, and in some situations, perform more specific and more complex calculations uh, in a simpler and faster manner. If you've watched the channel before, you probably know about Minty Tools for Excel, which is an Excel add-in that I developed with the specific aim of automating and speeding up mundane daily work tasks. If you want to learn more about Minty Tools for Excel, you can do so on the first link in the description below. And if you decide to purchase it and support the channel and me, there's also a 50% discount code in the description box down below. Now that you know how to use array formulas to speed up your Excel files, I want to show you my number one trick for making Excel models look more professional. And I'm going to do that in this video up here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in this video.